Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to the Rocky Mountain town of Woodland Park, Colorado. Oh my God. And discovers a Kitchen Nightmares first. Go to the window. A casual fine dining Italian restaurant with a drive through This looks like a fast food restaurant. This bizarre restaurant is run by a very vocal owner named Julie. We got a fucking problem. She is clearly the judge. You don't handle this kitchen. I handle this fucking kitchen. The jury. What the fuck is this? And the dictator of the struggling establishment. You go away. Go away from my face right now. She not only refuses to listen to her staff. Use the one in the back, I said. But Chef Ramsay as well. Do you have any idea what's going on behind here? We have been cooking these for four years this way. All of a sudden, they're fucked up. Julie's defense is to go on the offensive. Our spinach has never, 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 never looked like this. Pointing the fingers at others. You know what, Trevor? You refuse to do anything. The head chef, he has only two moods. Kiss my ass. Downright angry. She doesn't want to listen to anything we have to fucking say. Or passive aggressive. You don't like this, how about this? And while there are numerous problems with the food. I have never seen anything as bad as this. The biggest problem is that Julie. I think our food's good. Oh, come on is in complete denial. I'm standing by my food. This owner may be impossible to get through. The way you're running this place is incorrect. It's my restaurant. And Chef Ramsay may be stuck in neutral in Woodland Park, Colorado. Why doesn't he just leave it alone? Get ready for a battle. Oh, this is going to be fucking great. It's Chef Ramsay versus owner Julie. I'm leaving. Julie. I can't do it. And you'll be surprised how it turns out. You're walking out. I'm walking out. What is that? They're not crap and they're delicious. Then wake up! You wake up! Shut <laughs> the place down! Get out of here! That is amazing! That's embarrassing! Oh, Thank you so much. Woodland Park, Colorado. 30 minutes from Colorado Springs. It's known as the city above the clouds, and it's home to Manja Manja an Italian restaurant owned by former realtor, Julie Watson. Hi, Manja Manja, this is Julie, can I help you? We bought the building, it was a fast food restaurant and I didn't know what concept I wanted to do. Would anyone like some cracked pepper? My mom decided to open up an Italian restaurant because there aren't any other Italian restaurants. There's three Mexican and two Chinese. You guys need tables. This is the only Italian restaurant in Woodland Park and we've blown it. Come on, people. Because Julie is a poor manager. Just do whatever you guys want to do. How's that? She doesn't know what she's doing. I said to use plates. How are we supposed to plate up spaghetti? <sighs> this restaurant runs like a Jerry Springer show. Get rid of this shit. And what's in the walk-in? We fight a lot. My mom has a tendency to yell. No, you're supposed to fucking make a meat lasagna for tonight. Instead of solving the problem. The next fucking lasagna I bring back is going up your ass. She gets mad, she, you stay out of her way. Just not in the mood for it. And you say anything and you're gonna get it. Is someone hiding shit? Because I just ordered three dozen bowls. The king of the world attitude that Julie has causes a lot of problems. Trevor, that's burned to a curse. We have to start that over. My biggest problem in the restaurant is my head chef, Trevor, who thinks he's a god. I want it done and it better be done by two o'clock. I run someone. Fuck you, Trevor. I hate Trevor. He's disrespectful. He's just not a very nice person. He throws fits. What's going in? He's throwing stuff at me. He's messed food up on purpose. This is always a good way to check. Ah! He's walked out before. Here, you don't like this, how about this? I've never been into a sit-down restaurant with a drive through window. Hi there, how are you? A drive through screams fast food and not just casual, fine dining restaurant. This is not good. The food isn't cooked with much love. It's cooked with stress and a microwave. Where is my other lasagna? It's in the microwave. There's like no cheese to it. That one table bitch so much, I don't know what to do with them. I have had more people tell me what is wrong with me that than ever in my whole life. It's like open field day on Julie. I've reached my breaking point. I'm stressed and cannot take any more. Deep breath. If this restaurant goes out of business, I will lose everything. I have put all my money into this restaurant. Having Chef Ramsay here is the last resort.
we are. Wait, hold on a minute. Go to the window. This looks like a fast food restaurant. <laughs> this has to be a first. He's here. I see him. Janelle, just chill. I wonder if they have tables inside. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Nice to see you. What's your first name? Janelle. Janelle. OK, great. Look, let's get one thing right. You do have tables inside, right? Yeah. OK, great. Um, and the drive through why is that here? Normally, people call in their order, and then they pick it up. So. On average, uh, how many guests drive by a day? Maybe Not like one or two, So yeah. I'm the one of the day? Yes, you're the one wow. of the day. Wow, well, let's make this quick. Okay. Um, soup of the day is what? Uh, it's chicken and wild rice. Let's have a um, chicken and wild rice, please. OK. Thanks, darling. Mm -hmm. Wow. Why are you making me do this, Mom? Janelle, stop. What, should I just do soup how we normally do? And the yep, just do it like we normally do it. Well, let's see how quick they are. Very nerve-wracking. She's going to need a spoon. I know. Hey, Janelle, don't forget to tape the top. I'm going to tape the top. This is super frustrating. I just want this to be over. Where do you go? That's my soup. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. My kitchen nightmares first. It smells really good. A drive through Italian restaurant. It is hilarious. He has an adorable accent. Yes, he does have an adorable accent. <laughs> wow. That is it. <laughs> that is it. Wow. Doesn't look very um, appetizing. And uh, knife and fork, <laughs> nice spoon <laughs> to eat my soup. Mind you, it is actually thick enough to eat the soup half a fork. You forgot to give him a spoon. How's he supposed to eat his spoon? You didn't give me a spoon. I gave you no, a spoon. No, you didn't hand it to me. Trust me. If you're going to be in the drive through business, first of all, you can give me a, a spoon. And secondly, you could at least fill my cup. But this is. Pretty horrific. Oh. Wow. Hello. Hi. How are I'm you? Julie Watson. Julie, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. And you are the. I'm the owner. The owner. Well, let me tell you something. That's the first for me. A drive-through <laughs> pickup in an Italian restaurant. Was that great? The soup wasn't. Oh, the soup wasn't no, good. No, oh, just thick and bland and. I'm um, sorry. So let's catch up, shall we? Okay. Yeah. What's with all these little frilly curtains? People didn't like the fact that the booths were down, and so they asked me to raise the booths, and that's how we raised them. Oh, my curtains. Right, how are you? I'm good. Excellent. So what was the plan in opening this place? Because it looks like a chain restaurant. It was a chain restaurant. No, it looks like it now. Steel? It doesn't resemble a fast food restaurant for you. Well, kind of, but not that bad. Right. I don't see anything Italian in here whatsoever. Really? Yeah, really. I think it's cute. OK, well, when was the last time you were in Italy? Never. Ah. OK. I'm that? Irish. OK. Is that all fake? Are they Christmas tree it's... lights as well at the top? Yes, here? it is. Um, we're in August. No, but it's light. It gives light into the deck. I think it's beautiful. Which part is beautiful for you, the fake flowers or the curtains? <laughs> <laughs> You're just not going to let that go, uh, are you? Well, Holy pretty... shit! I'm just curious, that's all. It's, uh... Oh, shit. You're making me laugh. <laughs> uh, why Italian cuisine, then? I opened an Italian restaurant because people in Woodland Park said there's no Italian. Open an Italian restaurant, and so I opened an Italian restaurant. Right. You must have some good staff, surely. I do. So who are the highlights? Uh, Andrea is a great waitress. My daughter, Janelle. Oh, Janelle, the one who forgot the to window. give me a spoon for the soup. Yeah, the okay. one that forgot to give you the spoon. Um, I have Kevin's great, one of my cooks. Right. Um, problems, what are they? I think our food's great, but I have a cook that has worked with me since the day I opened, and he has an attitude. Right. But I haven't fired him because it's hard to get help up here in Woodland Park. It okay. is. Yes, it is. Who maintains the standards here? Me. Are you the controlling? The buck stops here. Right. But you just confirmed you've kept the wrong chef for four years. But he shows up. 90% of the time, he does what he's supposed to right. do. Right, OK. But 10% of the time, he's an asshole. And which restaurant did he come from? He's never worked in a restaurant. 
So he had no background in training? Exactly. So how did he start? He was not washing dishes. OK, and does he get on with the rest of the team, the front no. of house staff? No. He doesn't? No, he makes them crazy. And what do the servers think of him? They think he's an asshole. Okay. If he gets pissed off, he'll walk out the back door and sit and smoke. In the middle of service? Yeah. What? Yes. Where does that come from, that attitude? Because he thinks he's a god. He's seen the parade of people that I've had through this restaurant. Okay. So he's put you over And about. so he's, yeah, exactly. He knows that I can't fire him because I have no one else. How old is he? 22. He's 22? Yes. I mean, 22 years of age, you shouldn't be running the kitchen. But somehow okay. the food turns out good. It does turn out good. How is that possible? Because we haven't changed anything for four years. OK, well, we'll see. Proof's in the eating, right? That's right. Show me around. OK. Please. Excellent. Um, the Great Wall of Woodland Park. Yes. I love my wall. Don't make fun of my wall. Good. No, no, it's, uh, that's hideous. Ladies, how are we? Good, thank you. Uh, this Hi, Andrea. Is Andrea. OK, great. Uh, young man, come over. How are you, bud? Uh, Trevor Peterson, nice to meet you. Trevor Peterson. OK. And what do you do? Oh, I'm the head chef. So you're yes, the young 22-year-old that 90% is good and 10% is an asshole. Yeah. OK. Or the other way around, whichever way you uh, want to look at. No, I'm just going on what the owner said. Uh, how do you rate the food out of 10? Five. F oh. It's your own food, Trevor. Wow. And I would give it a 50-50 on Trevor's behavior. And where does this stem from? Did we fall out? We were dating back in the day, or I guess you could say. Right. That Might like... even be a 40-60 on the nice? bad side. Seriously? Yeah. You make me that mad. You, Thank you tried much. to punch me. What, Janelle. What, what, hold on. Janelle. Janelle, come over here, my darling. Please. This young man tried to punch you? Yeah, he pushed me into the lock and tried to punch me when I told him I was going to call the cops. When? Back about a month ago. Is that real? I didn't. It's somewhat real, yeah. So you grab her, threaten to punch her, and push her into the walk-in? After she tells me no one cares if I get fired, no one cares about my well-being, no one cares about me, no one gives a shit about me. No one likes you. Coming up... We got a fucking problem. Julie is on the warpath as Chef Ramsay tries the food. Why doesn't he just leave it alone? Then... Enough pasta for close to 400 portions. It's a discovery unlike any other. What fruitcake's operating this? And Chef Ramsay may be ready to throw in the towel. I'm going to drive straight back to the fucking airport. And he's not the only one. I'm not taking any more fucking tables. What? You're walking out. Knocking out. Chef Ramsay has already witnessed some minor problems like the decor and some major problems like the serious tension between the owner's daughter and the head chef. He's hoping that he can find some positivity in the food. How are you, darling? Good, thank you. How are you? Andy, right? Yes. I tasted that soup. I felt like going straight back to the airport. <laughs> OK, we're done. Let's order, shall we? OK. Um, right, let's go for the wild mushroom ravioli, please. Filled piccata. Um, where do I sit? The fresh Pacific salmon. Okay. Mama's own meat lasagna as well. And uh, I've got to go for the meatballs. I think we're done, my darling. Wow. Thank you. Of course. Here's his orders. Got a good mix. Is that for Gordon? Julia, you're in the way. Like always. You know what, Trevor? That's bullshit, Trevor, and you know it. How sick is my ass? Although I'm not a fan of Trevor's antics, I think our food is still very good. Mushroom raviolis. Mushroom raviolis. And what's the sauce? It's an Alfredo sauce. And can you ask the chef when he made the raviolis, please? Yeah. Thank you. Wow, that looks like a pile of defrosted snow with bear shit sprinkled all over it. Trevor, when were the raviolis defrosted? Just, Just now, yeah. Wow. Do they look homemade? I don't think so. They're frozen and they were just made. So store-bought? Yes. Damn. Can the chef make a ravioli? I don't think they ever have, no. Can you ask him if he can make a ravioli? Sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, wow, that is bad. Ah. Trevor, have you ever made ravioli before? Fresh ravioli? I have not. Do you know how? No, he no. does not know how. <laughs> He's never made him, and he doesn't know how. He doesn't know how. You know, making pasta is like making bread, right? So, 550 grams of flour, six egg yolks, whisk them up, pinch of salt, drizzle with olive oil. He's having Andy write down how to make how to make raviolis. Lovely. You mold it together. That's called pasta. Then knead it like bread. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. They were disgusting. <laughs> 
Wow. Did he throw that away? Yes. What the fuck is wrong with it? Trevor, he would like you to get together 550 grams of flour, okay. six eggs, oil, a pinch of salt, everything you need to make pasta. What's 550 grams of, I don't know what that is. Of flour. He needs to get the stuff to make food. I know, but what is 550 grams? Yeah, he's British, Mom. I know, but what does that mean? We got to do the conversion. conversion. We have to figure out how many cups okay. that is. Figure it out. I don't know. Okay. He wants him to get everything to make raviolis. He wants him to just get everything together and start oh, making okay. pasta. Oh, this is going to be fucking great. A chef that doesn't know how to make pasta, and you're the head chef of an Italian restaurant. Even if you can't make ravioli, linguine, spaghetti, lasagna. Wow. It's too oily. Trial and error. I've never done it before, Julie. Thank you. Yeah, that's way too oily. Yeah, that is too much oil in there. Yes, it's supposed to be dough, not paste. Now, now it's my first try. Bear with me. <laughs> Trevor is way out of his league right now. He has absolutely no idea what he's doing. That guy's an idiot. Here's your meat lasagna. Thank you, darling. And um, there's a big, disgusting thumbprint with meat sauce. Can you ask him just to take his paws off my side? Do you see that thumbprint? I do. It's like dubbed in the sauce and... Right on yeah, the edge right of the on the side of the plate. Yeah. Not appetizing. Can you ask him just quickly wipe that off, please? Absolutely. And tell him to clean these fingers, please. Yeah. Chef thumbprint all over my plate, covered in tomato sauce. No, thank you. That's disgusting. Now what? He hasn't tried it yet. He just wants you guys to clean the edges of the plate. There's fingerprints. There's a really bad one right there, and there's some more here. And he said to make sure you guys clean your hands. Yeah. I'm stressing out. Mama's made lasagna. Um, darling, why is it so watery there? Um, that would be from the marinara. Wow. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Ugh. Damn. That is stone cold. I mean... Well... Andy, so we've just touched that there with your finger. Right here. Cold. Yeah, it's ice cold. Oh, it's ice cold right here. Yeah. Show. Ice cold. Okay. <clears throat> Show Julie. Julie. Please, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Disgusting. The chef would like you guys to feel right here. It's cold. That fucking lasagna's cold. Julie, it's the microwave. I told you not to use that microwave. Use the one in the back, I said. It's not gonna make a difference, I guarantee I said you. to use the one in the back because I don't want this fucking happen again. It's not gonna make a yes, difference. Yes, it is gonna it's make a difference. Then why all of a sudden did it change? That it, fuck four fine fucking now. years. That's bullshit. I said, well, don't use okay, it. Okay, oh Julie. God. Julie's in denial about everything. And I don't understand why she won't acknowledge that. Make sure there's no fingerprints. Here's your spaghetti with meatballs. Thank you, my darling. And are the meatballs homemade? No, they're frozen. Oh, come on. Serious? Does he know how to make a meatball? He does know how to make meatballs. Oh, OK, great. So why is he doing them? Um, I believe that they used to do them and they fell apart too much before. That means he doesn't know how to make them. Doesn't know how to make them right. <laughs> wow. Ask the chef why he can't make a meatball. OK. Please. Yeah. Thank you, though. Wow. And the meatballs taste like warm foam. Trevor? Chef would like to know why our meatballs would fall apart. Why would you not be able to make a meatball? And so the reason we stopped serving them is because they fell apart. That was our original chef. I didn't say that. That was putting words in my mouth. Thank you. I would love to go back making handmade meatballs. OK. That's bullshit. <laughs> Trevor, I can't get you to do fucking prep, and you want to make meatballs? That's going to work. <laughs> Kiss my ass. You don't want to pay anybody to do anything. I have to beg you to come to work in the day. I can't even put you on days because you don't show up. Do you think I want to come in back here and try to handle a whole goddamn kitchen? You don't handle this kitchen. I handle this fucking kitchen because you refuse to do anything. Because I don't know what to do. You ask for this job. You always walk around I saying, I'm you. the head chef. I didn't ask you. <sighs> now, do you see why no one likes you? You can shut your mouth. Oh, I'm scared. Trevor says it was the original chef's meatballs that fell apart. He's never made the meatballs here. Okay, so 
he knows how. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's a uh, dreadful texture. Meatballs taste frozen. And marinara, if you just tip the plate to the side, I'll just show you, it's just full of water. I didn't expect a watery marinara. And the spaghetti's not even glazed, it's just bland. Okay. Thank you. Now what? The spaghetti is not glazed, it's bland. The marinara is watery. The meatballs, you can taste, are frozen. What's wrong with it? It's fucked. Oh. I don't, I don't know what's... <laughs> the spaghetti is bland, the marinara is watery, and you can tell the meatballs are frozen. I don't think it was that bad. I don't. I think it's fine. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Veal piccata. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. How's the VR? Yeah, it's still, it's still raw. You can see it there? It won't even cut, so I'm sort of scraping it. It's that raw. And it's not even hot. I don't mind it being pink, but it's raw. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. Veal piccata. Veal was raw. I mean, I know it just needs to be kissed in the pan, but it was that thick. Raw in the middle. The veal is still raw. It's raw. Raw? I mean, I can't say anything about that. It's fucking raw. Where I'm starting to get, like, fucking pissed. Thanks, Thanks, honey. You're very welcome. And could you ask the chef just to show me his bowl of pasta? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Chef wants to see the bowl of pasta you started. Oh, I tossed it. You threw it away? He threw it away. He threw it away? He did. Why? I have no idea. He did earlier, I guess. Damn. <laughs> that better be right. Thank you, Diane. Wow. Now, what is that? That's your salmon with That's the balsamic paint. With the balsamic paint? Yes. Is it salmon fresh? I believe it's frozen as well. You're kidding me. Mm -mm, it says fresh on the menu. It says fresh on the menu. You're absolutely right. Fresh Pacific salmon, frozen. Yes, it's frozen. Good God. I finished doing this. That's terrible. The mash tastes weird. It tastes weird. Do you mind? It's just, it's just, a... it just tastes old. When were they made? I'll go find out. Would you mind? Please, mm -hmm. honey, thank you. When were the potatoes made and by whom? Are you fucking kidding me? What's wrong with it? The mashed potatoes taste old. They just made them last fucking night. Okay. They were made last night. Okay. That's bullshit. This is fucking stressing me out, man. Chef Ramsay liked nothing today, and I don't know what the hell happened, and I am completely shocked. That's bullshit. There's nothing wrong with that salmon, and those potatoes were made last fucking night, so that's bullshit. I love my food. Why doesn't he just leave it alone? We got a fucking problem. Lunch was a complete disaster as Chef Ramsay discovered issue after issue. Wow. It's now apparent to him why this, the only Italian restaurant in town, is struggling so much. Uh, let's get the team out. Let's have a chat. OK. Everybody come. Uh, so I, I'm, I don't know where to start. Has anyone got an ounce of training? I personally don't. First question I asked Andy was, does a chef make pasta? I How bad does that sound when we're standing inside an Italian restaurant that you're the head cook of? The fact you can't even make a fucking meatball, that scares the shit out of me. If my interest has dwindled. You don't have the interest. You shouldn't be putting the jacket on. I mean, is anything fresh? I don't have fresh food. Everything that we come in except for our produce. OK, but I mean, you don't have fresh food. All of our, we make all of our sauces. Oh, come on. We do. Come on, what, you expect me to give you a round of applause because you make your sauce? Right. Mushroom raviolis. The filling was hideous. Bland sauce. Lasagna. Stone fucking cold in the middle. The worst thing about you defrosting it, A, you can't operate a fucking microwave, B, the bits that you were cooking, they're bland. Uh, the veal. The veal is old, I'll tell you that. Yes. What do you mean old? I mean, I don't order veal very often. It was raw, that's what I was trying to say. Oh. 
Fresh Pacific salmon, $18.50. Yeah. Frozen. Frozen, very weird taste, look dreadful, overcooked. No one complains about that salmon. Oh, People like it. So you don't think that customers need to know it's frozen? If they knew it was frozen, do you think they'd order it? Does it say fresh on the menu? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Big bold well, letters. Then, okay, then that's a mistake. You don't know. No, it was changed. It was changed. When was it changed? How long ago was it fresh? About two and a half, three years. Two and a half, three years ago. So uh, a while. When did the salmon arrive? Couldn't tell you honestly. You couldn't tell me. I couldn't oh tell you. Oh my god! I've seen that salmon in there for a while. I don't believe that either. I'm just saying. I don't believe that either. That's okay. Okay. Why did you go in denial when they're telling you the truth and they're they're I, in the engine because room? Because I'm the one that orders the food. Well, we're the you one don't that cook it. Makes I don't the cook food. it, but I order it. So when was the last time you ordered salmon? Probably two weeks ago. Why are you shaking your head? Because it's been in there longer than a month. Trevor, that is fucking bullshit. Do you think customers locally, do you think they should leave their home to come into your restaurant and pay for frozen food that they could cook better at home? I think our food's good. I'm standing by my food. I think our food's good. So what part of store-bought frozen food do you think is good? I think our food's good. Help me to understand what part do you think is good? I think it's good. I no. mean, I don't understand what you're asking me. OK. So out of all the dishes that I had, the veal piccata that's old that you agreed to. I do. The lasagna that's microwave that's stone cold, not even microwave properly, and the salmon with the paint. I'm asking you, very politely, what part of your menu do you think is good? I think our food's good. But you're not stupid. I'm not stupid. So meatballs frozen, sauce watery, lasagna. They can't even fucking reheat it properly. And then why are you blowing smoke up your own ass, telling yourself in a deluded way that your food's good? Or have I missed the trick and I haven't ordered something that you said I should be eating? I think our food's good. Who's telling you it's good? The customer. They're not coming. That's why you're in debt and you're putting your funds into okay, this place. Fine. No, but come on then, man up. I will say this, we have never had a customer. Andy will, but I have very had very few customers ever actually complain to my face. Okay, uh, do you know, I'm not interested about the customers that blow smoke up your ass currently. I'm interested in the customers that aren't coming any longer. And truthfully, most customers don't like to complain to your face. They just don't come back. They vote with their feet. I don't think you've got any idea how this business is functioning. I do understand how the business is functioning. You don't know what's on your menu. You don't know how it's written. Your chefs disagree with you. I mean, I, I've never seen so many people so far apart. And the proofs and the tasting, because it felt just all over the shop. You are way out of your depth. The food, bland, boring, dated. And when a head cook can't even operate a fucking microwave, that scares the shit out of me. But the owner said your food's good. So, continue kissing her ass. Wow. My food's good. My food's good. Yeah. My food's good. Well, that wasn't pleasant. I'm surprised I didn't walk out of this place years ago. Trevor's being a little fucking prick. <sighs> Don't cry. It hurts my feelings. You know. You cry, I'll cry. God. That was brutal. <sighs> that was a little too rough. Let's go outside. <laughs> that was very unpleasant. I don't even have, have ever felt like this before, ever, in my life. This is horrible. After a frustrating conversation with a defiant owner about the many problems with the food... Hi there, how y'all doing? Chef Ramsay returns to see how the dishes are prepared by this band of young cooks at Manja Manja. So talk to me about the line, how does that, uh, how does this roll? Well, we got our saute. Saute? Yep. All of our raws, our veggies, our produce, yada yada. What's in here? Meatballs and sausage and marinara. It's like an oil slick in there. Wow. That's terrible. Is that normally yep. like that? 
He said that the spinach was tart, didn't taste fresh. I think it looks just fine. Oh, we haven't met, have we? Yes, sir. How long have you been here, bud? A couple months. A couple of months. What's wrong with the place in your mind? We have a leadership problem. These guys haven't been trained properly. Yeah, you're not wrong. Honestly, I don't feel that Julie has the leadership qualities. We have a very young staff and inexperienced staff, and unfortunately, she's the biggest reason that they're not where they need to be. Oh, no. What's wrong, Janelle? So they're too salty, so they're ordering something else, just so you know. Too salty. Are you not interested in tasting this when it comes back, or you just fuck it, it comes back? I just say fuck it, I don't taste it. You just say fuck it, yes, don't sure. taste it. Wow. It's yellow, it's limp. Chili, that's the spinach from behind the line. It can't look like this. It's behind the line, they're cooking okay, with it. Why does the spinach look like this? That's what we've been getting in. No fucking way. Yeah, we've had to wash it because someone last night had a piece of sand in it. Seriously? What the fuck is this? Spinach that's you what? ordered. This is not, our spinach has never, 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 never looked like this. He's trying to impress Chef Ramsay, but that is not Trevor. Trevor is a spoiled little bastard that refuses to do his job. I have never seen our spinach look like this in four years. They've cooked with it, they've sent it, you've charged for it. You need to see it. I see it. And you're just gonna let them cook with it? No, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have to figure something out. Uh-huh. Throw that shit out. It's hard not to laugh. I know. Not down. Listen here. In the walk-in, he goes. It's mold on the floor. Look at that. This is an absolute horror. Fridge just used like a trash can. They even buying peeled onions. How much pasta are they cooking? Yeah. Is he expecting a pasta rush? And more pasta. He's obsessed with spaghetti. Containers of pasta cooked. All this work for what? What's he doing? Okay. Julie, you got two seconds? Sure. How often does the restaurant cook pasta? Uh, every day, every other day. So, like, twice a day? Fresh for lunch, fresh for dinner? No, once a day. They'll just cook it in the, like, midday. Every, oh. Yeah. Oh, OK. Do you have any idea what's going on behind here? This will be used today. Can you stop dreaming? Do you have any idea how many portions are in here? No, I you don't. Got, you got no idea how many portions of capellini pasta are in there? No, I don't. OK, how many do you think, then, roughly? 20? 20. Now, that is a lot of cappellini. That's just one container. It's pasta mania. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Enough pasta for close to 400 portions on this table here. And we've got how many customers tonight? 53. 47. 47. I don't know why there's this much pasta cooked. I'm only asking you because I don't know either. I'm looking at it thinking, what fruit cake's operating this? We don't have this much pasta. It I, didn't I actually, reproduce itself. I Let's get that right. I absolutely agree with you. There's usually three. One, two, three. Not all this other. These two, I don't know why these are here. You just told me this is all going to be used in a day. No, I'm if you, if it, okay. They Because here's the thing. I'm going to get okay. changed. Okay. And I'm going to drive straight back to the fucking airport because you are just bullshit me. OK, let me ask you this. Please. How can they cook this, the pasta for every order that fast? Doesn't it take, it would, these people will be waiting. These people will be waiting. So this is Capellini. I know it is. Which cooks in how long? About three minutes. 90 seconds. I'm I telling have you, never I'm seen, not a chef. I have never seen anything as bad as this. Okay. But what I'm just trying to explain to you is common sense. Maybe you are a fast food restaurant. It's dinner service at Manja Manja. I have never seen anything as bad as this. And Chef Ramsay has discovered over 400 portions of pre-cooked pasta. And Julie refuses to take any responsibility. Maybe you are a fast food restaurant. Look at all this pasta. I, I fucking agree with you. Oh, no, not more pasta. Where did that come from? That's gluten-free. Gluten-free. Gluten-free, gluten -free. Gluten -free. and there's the angel hair. Somebody needs to go wait on my table. You guys yeah, need to pick yeah, up you, table you, 19. You continue running your business. I don't want to stop you. Any more pasta in the house? Not that I know of, chef. Fuck me. They way overcook pasta like you wouldn't believe. They're trying to bury me. Yeah, I think they are, too. How's that bitch looking? Not the prettiest, but getting down. I don't know why Julie doesn't want to fire Trevor. He half-asses stuff. He's lazy. So what is that? It's our meat lasagna. We nuke it for four minutes, put cheese on, and nuke it for two minutes. So it's a double nuke. Wow. That looks like a science experiment. And now you're going to put it back in there with cheese? Cheese on it. My god. Oh, fuck me. Hold on, man. 
Where's that going now? Eggplants. Into the, the list, or microwave. The memoir. Back on the plate, back on the plate and, and marinara and send it out. Fuck it Can I use any of the microwaves? I don't know. <laughs> microwaves are full right now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Once again, we're working that microwave. One, two ovens, one, two, three microwaves. More microwaves than ovens. I have to agree. Oh, and shit, hold that. on. Oh, my god. It's hot. And what is this? Uh, they're supposed to be veggie lasagnas, but the microwave, like, goose it out. The final result is a hard piece. I can't even cut yeah, it. Yes, because it's been microwaved too long. Yeah. Doctor, did you discover? I think the patient is dead. Julie? Yes. Time of death, 7.44. Just touch that for two seconds. It won't hurt. Mm-hmm. But when you just say OK, it's like... I'm not saying OK. I'm saying something's fucked up. Something's fucked up. Why does it look like that, Trevor? Because it's microwave. We have been cooking these for four years this way. All of a sudden, they're fucked up. It's been fucked up for a while. No, they haven't. Did you use the microwave that I said don't fucking use? Yeah, I'm telling you. why'd you use it? Because all the microwaves do the same why'd thing. Why'd you fucking use it when I said don't fucking use it? all the microwaves do the same thing. Are you serious, thing? Kevin? If you use it again, me and you are going to have a fucking problem. All right. Huh. Deal. Kevin has never talked to me that way. And I can see that Trevor is rubbing off on that guy. Chris, hurry up. I, I need to put something in. What, what do you want me to do? I can't go any faster than the computer's going. No, I, you're fiddly fucking around. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. You want to plate up these raviolis and get them out? To Wasn't there supposed to be no sauce? Kiss my ass. While Julie and Trevor continue to point the finger at each other, it is, it is so salty. Chef Ramsay observes the majority of tables in the dining room are disappointed with the food. And that's overcooked. Medium well should be a thin pink line, gentlemen. Thin pink line. Well, that's, that's just, it's way over. It's way over. It tastes frozen. Right? Cafeteria? Yeah. So very sorry about that. Um, they are working on another one for oh, you. No should problem. be out just a second. Wow. What happened? They weren't happy with the breading on the eggplant. They said it was too thick and didn't taste fresh. Jesus. Truthfully now, when was the last time that was changed, your breadcrumbs? Yesterday. So you don't do it daily? No. Wow. She complains about the price. Who complains about the Julie. price? What else do you bread in there? Chicken and eggplant. You bread, yes. eggplant, yes. and chicken in the same container? Yes. Well, look at that in there. Yeah. So what happens for a vegetarian? Cross-contamination. I honestly never even thought about Julie. that. Julie. Yes? They change the breadcrumbs once every two days. You laugh. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because that's bullshit. What I'm trying to say is that I asked about the breadcrumbs. I the kitchen said they change them every two days. That's, I don't. So, okay. When, okay. When, in your mind, when do they change them? Every day. But you're saying one thing, they're saying the other. All I want that's is the truth. Okay. That's I'm, all I want. I understand that. Is this from yesterday? Yes. 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 And yes. how often do you change them? Every other day. Every other day, because yes. Julie, make sure that you don't throw them away. That's bullshit. OK, it's worse than that. Do you know what they put in there? Egg. Chicken. And egg. And eggplant. I know what they put in there. What I'm concerned about is in there, there's bits of chicken. I understand that. So if I was sat here with my wife or my children, they wanted a vegetarian dish, You're... and they got bits of chicken shit. OK, I'm not taking any more fucking tables. What? I'm stressed out. I'm not taking any more tables. Closing down. I just cannot do this and that. During dinner service at Manja Manja... Look at all this pasta! Chef Ramsay has discovered over 400 portions of pre-cooked pasta. That looks like a science experiment. And almost every dish being cooked in the microwave. Owner Julie still maintains that her food is good and that all of tonight's problems are caused by the cooks. I'm not taking any more fucking tables. It's closing down. I just cannot do this and that. I'm waiting on tables. Can you pass them on to the waiters or not? Yes, I, I mean, can. It's just going from bad to worse. You seem to be happy with it. Mom, you just got like four tables. What the hell do you want me to do, Chanel? I don't know. You need to check on your tables, though. Julie's in for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the soup today? Italian wedding. Who made that soup? It's store-bought. Wedding soup frozen. What else? What else is frozen? Yeah. Everything. I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. we got a full freezer full. This is insane. We got our tuna, we got our salmon, we got our beef, we got our chicken, we got our seafood. So everything's frozen? Everything. Yes, so there's nothing fresh? No, sir. Nothing. Deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. Julie, you got two seconds? Tonight's so the wedding soup. Yes. Yeah. Popular? Yes. Chef's made it. Right. Well, they 
They defrosted it. They defrosted it. That's it. And the customers love it? Yes, they do like it. And how many of them know that it's frozen? Uh, I have not had that conversation. All right. But you take their money? Yes, I do. Shame on you. What do you want me to say? You've given up, haven't you? No, I haven't given up at all. You don't think you can do better? No. You think it's time to microwave frozen food? I'm not microwaving frozen food. We're you microwaving... think it's okay to serve frozen meatballs? They're you not think frozen. it's okay? They're... Meatballs aren't frozen. They start out frozen. Wouldn't that be frozen? No, 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 no. You've worked at three restaurants. You can't be that stupid. And I know you're not. I would respect you more if you would just be honest with yourself. I'm being You're honest. You're done, aren't you? You're not fit to run this restaurant. Yes, I am. What qualifies you? Yeah, I was just about to ask that. You go away. Get out. Go away from my face right now. Wow. It's fake. It's not fake. If it's not fake, then what is it? It's a restaurant. Where is it a restaurant? Here. You don't make anything. You buy everything. If I got those tables out of that dining room to watch you reheat egg palm, lasagna, meatballs, they would shit themselves. I thought it was normal. When you go to a restaurant, what do you expect? Fresh or reheated frozen via a microwave twice? Do you expect that as a customer? No, I don't. So why do you do it? Because that's how I thought it was supposed to be done. You didn't! Because you don't give a shit. I do give a shit. Where do you give a shit? 45 covers in tonight. If I ask 45 customers, what percentage do you think of your food was fresh? What do you think they would say to me? I... No, they... you tell me. What do you think they would say? But you think they think it's normal. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Julie, what? Julie, you running away? No, I thought well, you were done. Well, can we ask the I customers were... a question? I thought we were done. Oh, no, no, I'm not done yet. Shortly, I'll be done. First of all, I'm sorry to disturb your dinner. Just out of interest, when you decided to come here this evening, you look at the menu. What percentage of that menu would you expect to be fresh? Let's start from table to table. Ladies. 9,200. 9,200. 9,200. 9,200. Madam. 9,200. 9,200. 9,200. Sir. 100 all the way. 100 all the way. Well, I am deeply sorry, but let me tell you something. It's not even 5% fresh. It was obvious. It was obvious. And 95% of everything you've eaten this evening is frozen. And you can cook better at home, yes? Yes. So why do you think it's fine now? I'm leaving. You're running away? I'm not taking any more. Julie. I'm walking out. You're walking out? Wow. Just not in the mood for it. I'm not going to be screamed out like that. I can't do it. Julie. I cannot do that. I'm walking out. Previously on Kitchen Nightmares. I have never seen anything as bad as this. Chef Ramsay was forced into battle with one of the most vocal and defiant owners he has ever encountered. You're supposed to fucking make a meal lasagna for tonight. Julie Watson bought a fast food joint and tried to turn it into her dream restaurant. Go to the window. This has to be a first. And although she changed the menu to Italian, her standards are no better. Just not in the mood for it and maybe worse this is not good. than the fast food restaurant that was once there. I don't see anything Italian in here whatsoever. I think it's beautiful. Only moments after Gordon arrived, it became abundantly clear that this business was dysfunctional. You tried to punch me. And that the morale was extremely low. No one cares if I get fired. No one cares about me. The food was disgusting. This is an absolute horror. And so was the kitchen. I told you not to use that microwave. Kiss my ass. After discovering that all of the pasta was pre-made. He's never made them, and he doesn't know how. Chef Ramsay asked head chef Trevor for fresh pasta. It's too oily. It's supposed to be dough, not paste. But Trevor couldn't deliver. A chef that doesn't know how to make pasta, and you're the head chef of the Italian restaurant. Although Chef Ramsay pointed out how dire the situation really was. Meatballs frozen, sauce watery, lasagna. They can't even reheat it properly. Julie refused to accept it. I think our food's good. Oh, come on. I'm standing by my food. Oh, my gosh. At dinner service, there were more shocking revelations. That's the spinach from behind the line. It's yellow, limp. Our spinach has never, 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 never looked like this. Outrageous amounts of pre-cooked pasta, enough to feed a packed restaurant for weeks. What fruitcake's operating this? And the overwhelming majority of the food was cooked, sometimes twice, in a microwave. In spite of all of this, Julie remained in denial mode. You think it's okay to serve frozen meatballs? They're not frozen. They start out frozen. Wouldn't that be frozen? 
desperately looking for a way to get through to the stubborn owner. Julie, you got two seconds. Chef Ramsay asked the customers one very important question. When you come out to dinner, what percentage of that menu would you expect to be fresh? 90 to 100. 90 to 100. But let me tell you something. It's not even 5% fresh. Julie couldn't handle the ugly truth. I'm leaving. And decided she had enough. Julie. I'm not taking any more. I'm walking out. You're walking out. I cannot do that. Tonight, the dramatic conclusion of Manja Manja. Get a grip fast. Will Julie bail on her restaurant? Oh, I'm just exhausted. In one of the most intense kitchen nightmares ever. I'm so stressed out. You will witness stunning revelations. Who's on drugs? Betrayal. You are fucking lying. Who interrogates it? And disappointment. I didn't know that. As Chef Ramsay is forced to deal with something he has never dealt with before. <gasps> this is not working for me anymore. Just out of interest, when you decided to come here this evening, you look at the menu. What percentage of that menu would you expect to be fresh? Let's start from table to table. Ladies. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. Madam. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. Sir. 100 all the way. 100 all the way. Well, I am deeply sorry, but let me tell you something. It's not even 5% fresh. It was obvious. It was obvious. And 95% of everything you've eaten this evening it's frozen. And you can cook better at home, yes? Yes. So why do you think it's fine now? I'm leaving. You're running away? I'm not taking any more. Julie. I'm walking out. You're walking out. Wow. Just not in the mood for it. I'm not going to be screamed out like that. I can't do it. Julie. I cannot do that. I'm walking out. I'm done. You You're don't care. You're screaming at me in front of customers. Because you don't fucking listen. I do listen. You do not listen. I was proving a point. I wasn't screaming at you. Uh, what do you want me to say? You're. you're I want you to wake you're up. You're belittling me. You're. I you're, am belittling you. You're tearing you. me apart. So you think it's right to take their money? I don't know. You don't know. I. I am. A, I, okay. I. Ninety to ninety-five percent fresh. That's what they came to your restaurant for. And everything I've showed you tonight, you're blaming your chefs. I am not blaming my chefs. I, I you can ask. I, I take responsibility for a lot of the shit that goes on in this restaurant. Honestly, I feel like it's a free for all here. You run and do what you can as much as possible until your shift's over. And that's it. Dude, that's you guys it. have never said this kind of stuff to me ever, ever. I say stuff all the time. You I've, never say I've anything, asked for a cleaning Kevin. list, cleaning list for the back area to keep shit clean. How long ago was this? Three weeks ago? Where is it? You know, like, common stuff to clean? Where hey, is Kevin, it? Kevin, let's talk about all the times you haven't showed up to work because you're high. Two times. You're so disrespectful to her. You need to show a little She respect. doesn't want to listen to anything we have to fuck to say. She tries to, but you guys don't even guys, give her a chance. I have talked to you a hundred times. Stop. I have talked to you over and over and over. You know I have, Trevor. You're fucking lying. You are. What? I have sat down and talked to you so many times and said, what can we do to make this better? And you never fucking say anything. So that's a fucking lie. Because every You're time lying, I do lying. say something, get shut down. You are fucking lying. Whatever. She's given you so many chances, Trevor, and you know it. Let's talk about your habits for a second and all the times you come in so high that you throw shit at the walls. So high that you want to fucking punch Who someone. interrogates it? You! No, you fucking... You gotta get the fuck out of this restaurant oh, so we can work. No! Yes. I don't fucking do anything! You're so high all the fucking time that when you go off fucking drugs, you get so angry that you don't even want to work. Drugs? Who's on drugs? He's a fucking tweaker. And you fucking know you're a tweaker. You've been doing drugs for three years. Janelle, Janelle, come here. Janelle, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, fuck him! He deserves to be fired, and you know it! He tried to fucking punch me! And if I would've let him right now, he's going to fuck, fucking punch me again! He's such a fucking asshole! He's so disrespectful! OK, stay away from here now. Darling, go inside the restaurant, please, and get a glass of water, please. <laughs> That is not right. 
<laughs> How long has this been building up? A long time. The way you're running this place is incorrect. How in the hell are these doors still open? Because I fight and battle to keep the restaurant together. For what? Because I want it to succeed. Why do you want it to succeed? Because it's my restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's my restaurant. Do you know what? Sometimes it's good to stop completely and start again. You're just continuing. I'm not trying to rub your face in it. But when you tell but me... But that's what it feels like. Well, because you're in denial, because you're telling me that's what the customers want. You can't take the criticism. That's I what I'm struggling with. I can take No, this. you can't. Yes, I can. You're going to stand there and argue that the shit that you're defrosting and cooking in the microwave is what the locals want. Lunchtime, you kept on telling me, my food's good, my food's good, my food's good. And then all night, every 15 minutes, something else cropped up, or that's been defrosted, or that's frozen, or that's the crazy cooking vegetarian dishes in the same breadcrumbs that you were with chicken palm. And you have a, a, a Cajun company that provides frozen food. You defrost it, he reheats it, and throws it out there. <sighs> Customers aren't that stupid. And I'm sorry, but the truth hurts. And I've closed the restaurant before. I failed in my hometown. But I don't stand there with the arrogance thinking, it's perfect. I never said it was perfect. So why are you taking the money? Because I'm trying. How about trying to make their experience a bit better? I or you're not up for that? I, I am up for that. Are you? Yes, I am. So where's that passion, then? I have passion. Where? I want... What dish? I don't know. I'm just exhausted. I'm struggling to find anything positive. I'm struggling to taste something that should be served in a restaurant. And this is not how restaurants run. Trust me, this is not normal. I thought it was normal. I thought I was going to right. I don't think they even enjoy serving that shit. Apparently, I'm doing it all fucking wrong. What are you waiting for? I don't know what I'm waiting for. Get a grip fast. Finish cigarette and clear down. My head is just spinning. <sighs> I thought I was doing it right. I did. I did. <sighs> and when he, Chef Ramsey said that I didn't care about this place, I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here doing this right now. It's been a long time since Chef Ramsay has seen so much tension between an owner and a kitchen staff. Let's go in the dining room and have a quick uh, catch up. Before he can even begin to push forward with improvements to the restaurant, he knows he needs to have a heart to heart with the people who work in it. OK, I want to talk to you all as a group. Yesterday was a bad day. The atmosphere in here is dreadful. The relationships are bad. And this was ugly. I have to say that some of the things that happened yesterday, I was stunned. I have never been talked to by my staff ever. Last night, when Kevin talked to me the way he did, I was shocked. Kevin has never raised his voice to me, ever. Everything was at a boiling point. There's a fear around here. Everybody's walking on eggshells. They're so afraid that they think she's going to jump off the handle because she's so frantic that, that we're all on edge. That isn't true. That's we're not true. I am very forgiving. That's a blatant lie. You were so rude and so disrespectful to me last night. How do you expect us to act? I never said a word to you. Are you kidding me? I was at the because... computer. You're going to tell me to hurry up, get out the way? Judy, why did you go after 
Chris. I've had customers in this last week told me that Chris is in the restaurant talking shit, saying what a bitch I am. Is this legit? This is legit. All right. I, and I have. I mean, if she's gonna say that, then she's forcing me to say defend what you myself. Want, Chris. She has people calling her bitch on a daily basis, out loud in front of her face, and I have defended her. Well, I've heard. And it's 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 you. Are, no. I've heard people saying that you're talking about everything that you think is wrong with the restaurant. Have I been talking about what I think the problems is, what I think that could help this place out? Absolutely. Did I ever once badmouth her? Absolutely not. Yes, you did. I did not once say anything. If I've said anything, it's that the people that are around her are incompetent. And she has a right to be pissed off. Mm -hmm. That's what I've said. I've never said That's anything right. about her in a disrespectful way. That's BS. So don't tell me that I don't come in here and do what I'm supposed to do. Don't tell me that I don't. I've had more people tell me this is the best service I've had and I've come in here since this place was open. I'm not talking about last night. I'm talking about since I've been here. I'm talking Chris, about I'm the talking about well, I'm, tables I'm, that tell me that you and talk. And I'm telling the way you what the tables are telling me. Chris, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with I'm you. Not because gonna, I'm not arguing I'm not with you either. I know what I said. And, and I, know, I never said nothing. And I know, like that. And I know what? what the customers have said to well, me. I, I don't I, I I can't deal with what people are telling you. I'm telling you what I know. All the stuff that's wrong in this place, I could have went on for days about the stuff that's going on, but I didn't. I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to put you in a place where all of us can make a little bit more money. And if somebody took that as me being rude to Julie, hey, man, that's just the way it is. You crazy. You want to know what the problem is around here? It's, it's, it's blaring. It's, it's got stars all around it. Julie, there seems to be an air of discomfort with you around the customers and the staff. Why are you so agitated? I have to be in the back and helping the staff, and it's too stressful trying to do both. I just think you should focus more on managing. I mean, you have a hard time focusing I, on what you need to do. Yeah, you're I'm too, too scattered. scattered. Yeah, yeah. organization. Scattered. You're right. Yeah, you need scattered. more organization. Oh, no, no, but I think what you haven't done is you haven't prioritized the list of importance in terms of what you need to accomplish. Right. Because you seem far too agitated and way too on edge. I agree. But some of the blame is my staff. The whole staff? No. The major issues in the restaurant are Trevor. Trevor is creating a lot of stress in the restaurant because he has a bad attitude. He doesn't want to work. He wants to stand behind that line and only cook his food. I cannot schedule him in the day, or right. he just won't show up. OK. He just doesn't show up. How long has this been going on for? It's gotten really bad in the last six, eight months. Really bad. So he's checked out? Yes. He's absolutely taking advantage of me because my hands are tied because I don't have anybody else in the restaurant. And the days that he doesn't appear, what are the excuses? He doesn't have an excuse. He just doesn't show up. Uh, Trevor, your side, what, what's going on? Have you given up? I had those days, yes. Some days are better than others. Not only are you in way over your head, but you're, you're at your depth. Yes, yeah, sure. One mistake happens and you get angry with everybody. How long have you felt so angry behind that line? It's grown and built over this past year. Why did you come in with that attitude? I was in over my head at the time. I was in my own personal problems. And it brought it into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the problem. When Trevor gets angry right. and has one of his fits, it happens in the restaurant while we're full. Andy calls me quite a bit and says, Trevor's refusing to cook. He's out back smoking. There's tickets on the line. You need to come to the restaurant. Right. Because he's acting like an ass and saying, I won't cook. And none of this is brought to my attention at the time. How am I supposed to fix something if it's... Because we're scared of you, Trevor. I'm scared of you. Right. When you went for Janelle, personally, why does the job take you that far in the unknown? That, that day, you get that angry that you want to punch her. That day, uh, we had a new cook. He kind of lipped off to me, and I was saying stuff under my breath. And then out of nowhere, she comes to the back and yells, no one cares about you, no one cares about your life. That's because you were throwing things at the wall. It doesn't involve you. I had tables, Trevor. I had tables saying, that guy is high, that guy, I'm scared to be in here right now. You were yelling about my mom, about how she was a bitch. She is my mother. I don't think you realize that. She is my mother. How would you like it if someone talked about your mother like that? How would you like it if someone called your mom a bitch and stupid and worthless? How would you like that? I don't work with my mom. I don't well, have but how would problems. you like it? She is my mom. I know. She, she is. is my mom. And you I have respect know? for her. No, you do not. You have no respect for her. I don't have respect for you. I don't have respect for you either.
There is no question that Manja Manja has major problems with the food, but the interpersonal problems of this restaurant is Chef Ramsay's biggest hurdle to overcome. We're scared of you, Trevor. I'm scared of you. And the relationship between Julie's daughter, Janelle, and Chef Trevor may be impossible to fix. You were throwing things at the wall. It doesn't involve you. I had tables saying, that guy is high, that guy, I'm scared to be in here right now. So, Janelle, could the customers hear him throwing things Yes, he was yelling and slamming shit and he was slamming pots. He was throwing nice against the cutting boards. Were you scared? Yeah, I was scared and my table was scared too. Here we are with a business losing thousands of dollars a week and you start shouting and screaming in the kitchen, petrifying the customers, petrifying the owner's daughter. Were you high? That day I was, yes, sir. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Judy. I didn't know that. What did you say? I didn't know that he was high that day. You know, I thought it was maybe once every six months. And I talked to him about his drug use on several occasions. And he said, I'm done. I'll never do it again. He promised for me. Obviously, I didn't know enough about drugs. And how long has this been like this? A good time. Mm -hmm. 12 months? Longer than that. Mm -hmm. And what's the substance? I didn't know. Uh, it's methamphetamines. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's serious stuff. Are you attending beatings? No, sure. You're not? This is not about a chef and a, the owner's daughter falling out. This is, this is toxic. What are we waiting for? Someone to get hurt? It's, it's time to make some changes in this restaurant, and no. I'm, I'm ready. Trevor, this is not working for me anymore. I've had this conversation with you about your drug use for too many times. Let's become poison in the restaurant, and I can't do that. And you're fired. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sorry, I can't have this going on. I respect your honesty, but you cannot walk in here under the influence. I understand. On your downward spiral, start turning this place upside down. And you certainly can't cook whilst on that. You need sure. help. And listen, everybody in this room has made mistakes, and you've made one of them. Yeah, sure. Um, Trevor, let's have a word outside together. Wow, that was tough. I talked to him. He said, I'm not doing that. I believed him, obviously. I didn't know. You need help, but I know. And you've got to get into treatment uh, quickly. I want you to get yourself home and get yourself treatment. I will. OK, bud. Take care. I really appreciate it. It'll be better for him. I didn't know he was doing drugs, and I'd, I would have, yeah. I didn't know. I'm embarrassed. I can't believe any of this went on. But I think having Trevor being so young and inexperienced on my line and me expecting him to know how to move this restaurant forward, it was a big mistake. I'm very nervous to go forward. I don't know what's going to happen from now. I just don't know. After learning that Manja Manja's head chef, Trevor, has been abusing drugs, Julie has decided to let him go. Now Chef Ramsay wants to make sure that Julie is committed to making big changes, to putting her restaurant on a path to success. The atmosphere in here is dreadful. Everybody is at such a high stress level. OK. But with regards to Trevor... I didn't know. I, I, I understand. I have a lot of experience with addicts, and he is in a bad place right now. He is not fit to be a head cook or a senior cook or a personal responsibility. I, I knew that I needed to let Trevor go. I knew that he was the cancer in the restaurant that was causing a lot of yeah. bad attitudes. OK, I respect your decision, but I would seriously like you to consider down the road, if he gets his act together, just keeping that door open. I will. He needs to step up and get clean. OK, I understand. But here's the thing. I need to know now that you 
deep down inside are seriously committed to change. I am absolutely committed to change. Absolutely, 100%. So you need to have a better vision because you're so fragmented. I agree. And you're not focusing on anything. It's not the way to run a business. I'm too spread out. You weren't even cooking your food. No. We've got to change the food. The food has got to be changed. Good. Good shit. What other things did you think about that you want to change? I need to quit waiting tables, and I need to have better communication with my staff. That's a huge commitment. It is. What you just said. I can Everything do it. You just said. I is, can do this. It's true. It's true. I agree. I need to take care of this. We've got a, a gap to fill in the kitchen. Yes, we do. And I'm terrified. And this place needs a chef that can help run this business from the engine room and to get the business afloat and up and running and making more money. No, I, yeah, I, no, I agree. Absolutely agree with you. I'm going to make some calls and I'm going to get help. OK, I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. It's time to make some serious changes in this restaurant. I know I've been part of the problem, but I'm ready to go forward and make this restaurant successful. Now that Julie understands the necessity of dramatic changes to the restaurant, Chef Ramsay wants to show Julie the impact and importance of fresh ingredients. I'm going to cook, you're going to wash. OK. The two dishes we're going to make, a simple lasagna and a simple roast salmon. Have you ever functioned this restaurant without microwaves? No. Wow. And how many restaurants do you think function more with their microwaves than they do with their ovens? That I don't know. No, not many at all. That's all changing as well. OK. I can't wait for Chef Ramsay to show me how a real, true kitchen is supposed to be run. He's going to teach me how to cook because we're doing it all wrong. So the exciting thing about lasagna is in the layers. Tomato, meat sauce, mozzarella, pasta. How difficult was that? It looks pretty it easy. five minutes. Pretty easy. OK. What do you dislike about being in the kitchen the most? The stress of being behind the line. When you've got a great prep and you've got yourself organized, it becomes the most pleasurable and the most de-stressful thing you can ever do. A little salt, a little pepper. Now, into the microwave for four minutes. Fuck off. Are you serious? <laughs> You're good at taking orders, but you've got a brain. Use it. OK, open up the fridge and take that out, please. What is that? Salmon. Yeah, what do you mean, salmon? Fresh salmon. How do you know it's fresh? Because I can tell by the look of it. It's got that dark pink color. Right. How do you cook salmon? They oh, cook it on the flat top. Now, cooking salmon this way is a lot easier than it is on that solid top. Once you've got a good color in salmon, turn it over once. That was so much better. The practice you were doing beforehand was so much more difficult. You can do all these beautiful dishes so easy in a short amount of time and make them fresh. We are done with microwaves. We are done with frozen food. I am buying everything fresh. This is just a small sample of how exciting your Italian fare could be. And when you're the only restaurant within a 15 to 20 mile radius serving food like this, trust me, there should be a queue up outside the door. And um, we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. And we okay. all have to work as hard as we ever have to reposition this restaurant. Yes. I know you've gone through a lot and there's a lot happening. Don't cry. But... I know, I'm distressed. What are you stressed about? Just the, this, all of it. It's stressful. Having that anxiety is normal. Bottling it up is not. Yeah, I've held it in for a long time. I, I can see that. We have your back. I know. We got you. Now you're sounding That's like a team, Mike. Now you're sounding like the way you should be supporting an owner. Good. Now that Trevor's gone, I did make some calls, and I have found a chef. OK? Oh, Someone to lead your kitchen. I'd like you to meet Don Wolf. How are you, buddy? You good? Yeah, I'm great. First of all, look at that smile on that face. <laughs> Colorado boy, local boy. Oh. Yeah, in Denver. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. He ran as an executive sous chef at a very reputable Italian restaurant in Denver. He has an encyclopedia of knowledge in conjunction with Italian cuisine. I've arranged for him to stay for the next two weeks and secure a new chef coming in. OK. Listen to this guy. I plan okay. on it. He's going to teach you everything he knows. Absorb it like a sponge. It's my pleasure. I'm ready. Get to know your new team. I will. How's it going? I'm pretty Kevin. good. Kevin? Nice to meet good you. Good to meet you, man. Cooking is a whole different story for me now. We used to cook with microwaves. Now we cook with ovens. I'm going to grasp as much as I can right now and learn from Chef Don. We're going to learn everything. Oh, good. And it's, it's simple and it's delicious. It is so amazing that Chef Ramsay got this new chef for me, and I just can't believe it. I'm over the moon. That's good. 
Coming up, Chef Ramsay relaunches Manja Manja. We're cooking food now, not reheating it. Will Julie be able to handle the numerous changes? We're just throwing everybody off. Rushing, rushing, rushing. It's new, it's new. Or will a critical mistake ruin the restaurant's comeback? So now just completely screwed us. Confident in the dramatic changes that are coming for Manja Manja, Chef Ramsay has surprised Julie and the staff. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With a community event to encourage people to return to the restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am so grateful for you all to be here. We are making dramatic changes to your local Italian restaurants, and I know that you're going to love them. Hi, my name's Julie. I own Manja Manja. I am so excited to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming. The whole town's here. It's a great feeling that they're here to support us. In addition to the activities, and the sampling of some menu items. Very good. <laughs> Chef Ramsay has invited local dignitaries. Are we ready? To participate in a pasta eating contest. On your mark, it says go! It was amazing. The crowd was all happy for us. Everybody stood in the race! they're actually realizing that we're trying to change things and they're supporting it. Fresh bruschetta right here, yeah. Excellent. It is so delicious. I love it. Great flavor. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks. I can't wait to go to Manji Manji and try the new menu. It looks much better than it was before. This is wonderful. Oh, thank you. you. Oh, please come. Everybody is saying they love the food. I am so excited. This is our chance to prove to everybody that Manja Manja is back. While a big part of yesterday was spent spreading the word about the new Manja Manja, last night Chef Ramsay's team worked around the clock and made a massive transformation to the dining room. Are you ready to see the new Manja Manja? Yes, yes. Welcome. The new manja manja. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jump in. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. It's oh, beautiful. My gosh. Wow. Look at that. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jump on in. Wow. wow. It looks, it so looks good. stunning. It is. Oh, wow. Right. Wow. Welcome to your new restaurant. Wow, I'm stunned. Gone is that bland beige color. And in its place, a spruce vibrant green. Wow. Cool. It's beautiful. Gone are those dreadful, dreary boots. We've replaced all the seating with these beautiful wooden chairs, which dramatically opens up this beautiful room. Wow. I love the chairs. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. That's awesome. This is awesome. And you know what? With those boots gone, the flow of service should function so much better. Wow. I'm Overwhelmed. It's a warm comfort feeling in here right Doesn't now. It? Look at the wall. Before it was an eyesore. Now that we have beautifully made it blend right in. This is great. Breathtaking. Isn't it breathtaking? It really is. It's gorgeous. Look at the windows. Full length wooden blinds draped with wonderful taupe curtains. It is absolutely beautiful. It's so beautiful. And let's be honest, it does not look anything like fast food restaurant, right? No, no not at all. I can't thank you enough. Did you still like the old decor that you said you were beautiful? No, of those. no, this is so much better. You sure? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I thought my old restaurant really looked good, but after seeing this, I must have been crazy. I'm excited. I'm really excited. The place looks absolutely amazing. It's inviting, feels like Woodland Park. People are going to want to come in here and enjoy themselves. The pictures are nice. It's really cool, too. I like this. This is probably the best present my mom's ever gotten in her entire <laughs> life. I've never seen her that happy before. To go along with a completely revamped dining room, please take a copy of the menu and hand it down. Wow. wow. Chef Ramsay has done his magic to the menu as well, with fresh Italian cuisine that is sure to be a hit with this tight-knit community. Visually, what do you think? Gorgeous. Absolutely. It's beautiful. 
it screams, eat me, yeah? Absolutely. Let's start off with the bruschetta. Great little board for sharing. So whilst the guests are undecided what they're going to be having, hit the table with the bruschetta. Likewise, with the chef's antipasta uh, mixture of salamis, meats, cheeses, and some pickled vegetables. Those two should hit the table immediately. The spaghetti and meatballs. Done with a rich tomato sauce, fresh basil, and spicy, delicious meatballs. Beautiful. Yum. Manji very own lasagna. Look at those layers. And guess what? Breaking news. It's coming from the oven. Not the microwave. Not the microwave. Yes. <laughs> Next to that, one of my favorites, pan-seared salmon. Big hit. Served with a nice, fragrant lemon risotto. Simple. A uh, chocolate molten lava cake. Delicious, creamy, rich, sumptuous in the middle. Cut through, it just oozes. That's perfect. And let me ask you this. What percentage of this small menu is frozen? Well, I'm sure nothing. Not a frozen ingredient anywhere. Not a microwave being in size. You have to embrace change. Everything here. It's fresh. Now, to go along with your stunning food, we have a complete new range of flatware and dinnerware provided by Oneida. Right, get up to speed, dig in. Mm, that's good. Isn't it? It's that sauce. I'm extremely excited to cook this new food. Like, it feels like I left Manja and went into a completely different kitchen. Wow. It's really good. So good. Tasting this new food compared to my old food, it's daylight and dark. This food has great flavor. I now realize that my other food was bland. This is delightful. I can't even put a plate in the microwave. They don't even fit. <laughs> Coming up, stop. the pressure is on as Julie is in the center of the action. We're cooking food now, not reheating it. The question is, will she be able to adapt and lead her restaurant to a successful relaunch? We're just turning everybody off, rushing, rushing, rushing. Or will she collapse and take the restaurant with her? So now I've just completely screwed us. It's minutes before the doors open. Come over, guys, please. Let's go to the dining room, shall we? And the morale in the restaurant is completely different than when Chef Ramsay first arrived. The important thing tonight is what? Getting the food out, making sure it all runs smooth. Communication. Yes. You don't send mistakes out of the kitchen. We're not going to even attempt to send anything out substandard. And hey, guess what? You're not going to be pushing any numbers tonight. <laughs> Four minutes, two minutes, cocktail sticks. You'll be cooking. Covering the saran wrap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just watch your sleeves. It's a real oven, so it's hot in there. <laughs> yeah. Are we ready? Yes, yes. Yeah. sir. Let's go, guys, yeah? All right. Let's make it a night to remember. Right this way. Here's our new fresh menu. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. While Chef Don will be working with Kevin behind the line. You're the expediter. Chef Ramsay wants Julie to be working in the kitchen as well. And he has a critical tip for her before the start of service. You've got this dreadful habit of rushing things. I know. You I... need to slow down. Okay. Rushing takes place in fast food restaurants. Right. You have something unique now. Okay. You need to understand that and nurse it. Okay. Anyone turns around and says, oh, we waited. No, they're not really waiting that long because it's cooked to order. Okay. Got to get that through in there, I yeah? I know, it's new, it's new. First ticket's coming in. Er We're working on nine calamari and an antipasto salad. Fantastic, thank you. Calamari's going down. Can you fire table four, please? You got it, boss. You, you have a fried artichoke going, right? And then yes. the next app is the meatballs. Come right up. Meatballs the working meatball hard. App. Kevin, I need two fried artichokes and one calamari. Your first one's going down right now. Don't start the calamari. He's got four Caesar salads on there. Do you have an antipasto salad made? You're doing two and eight right now? Oh, my god. Kevin, you heard me on that fried artichoke? Yeah, it's in the oven. Yeah, you just asked a minute ago, uh, Judy. Give him time. Understand one thing. We're cooking food now, okay. not reheating it. Okay. So you have to cut these guys some slack. All right. But understand the difference, how we're cooking, right? Yes, I do. Thank you. Although it is very early in service, Chef Don is pushing orders out in a timely manner. Spaghetti and meatballs right here. And customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. It tastes so fresh. It's delicious. This might be the best lasagna I've ever had. But about 40 minutes into service, Julie's fast food mentality is returning. Can I take this? Nope. She has lost a grip on what has been sent. How are we doing on the calamari and the artichoke? Already gone. And has fired too many orders too quickly. Appetizing the window, Julie. What are they for? You got two calamari. I don't have a ticket for these. That's what I'm, I'm a little confused. Creating confusion in the kitchen. Kevin, I need a chocolate lava cake. Chocolate lava cake going down. Don't hurry on them because they'll only like halfway through their food. Hey, who had the cakes? They got to go out. What's wrong? They still have their food. But, but, but they're ready. I know. This is crazy. Get, get, get your mother. This is stupid. Mom, chef needs you. Oh, come on, Julie. Okay. Yes. You're firing. Come here. You're firing desserts on seven. They're still eating. So now you've just completely screwed us. And I'll show you why. Okay. Look. 
They're ready. A, they deserve a gap in between entrees, appetizers, and desserts. This is table seven. Yeah, it's this okay. one. Okay. I'm not, I, well, anyway, okay, I just, I, okay, but they I haven't finished the entree, finish that's it. all. Okay. A, a, look, a chocolate molten light is not okay. like taking ice cream out of the I freezer, understand. it's cooked to order. So they're still okay. eating their entree, and we're not going to ram them and stuff them like, okay. like pigs. It is so important for my mom to follow through with what Chef Ramsay told her, or this place won't survive. Julie? Yes. That's the transition, understanding the weight. It's okay. an experience now with this food. So you need to understand just the pace slows down a bit. Okay. Remember, we're at a different restaurant than we were uh, here at the beginning of the week. I'll be very careful. I absolutely got the point. I have to remember, this isn't a fast food restaurant anymore. We are cooking everything fresh to order, and it takes time to get there. It's different service. We're used to slamming food out, so yeah. this is different. Absolutely. What about you? Can you fire it? Absolutely. Tim, see you in 18. Are you ready for it, Andy? Yes. OK. Can you run that to high, please? Sure. Chef Ramsay's words have now clearly registered with Julie. So you're working on eight right now? I'm doing eight right now, yeah. And then yes. 15 to 1 right behind it? She is now managing the kitchen properly. Artichoke hearts. Thank you. I need a runner. And understands that the operation of the new Manja Manja is completely different than what it was before. That's good. That's good. That's good. And so is the appreciation for the food. This looks really fresh. I guess we'll have to make this part of our date night. It's been a really long time since I've seen this restaurant with so much energy and with be customers. Manja Manja is definitely back. Chris, how is everybody out there? Everything is very smooth so far, Chef. Good. They love it. Great. They love the food. Good they, to hear. They're thrilled. They just think yep. it's so delicious. Right, good job, sorry. you guys. No, good job, you. I saw a huge change in Julie. She was actually standing on the line, not screaming, just keeping everybody communicating. It's just like, you know, she was reborn. It was perfect. Very nice job. Nice job. Up top. It means the world to me that I finally have a successful restaurant. No more messing around in this restaurant. I'm the boss. I never thought I'd be standing here with a huge smile on my face. Me either, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, thank you. All of you. A incredibly successful relaunch. How'd you feel? Great. Good. And so you should. And so you should. Good job. As dramatic as the change this restaurant has gone through, there was something else that was even more dramatic, and that was Julie. Uh, my darling, tonight you took the reins, and you were in charge. You sounded and you looked like a boss. Good job. A really good job. Yeah, you did. Thank really you. Know. Know. Tremendous help back there. Oh, yeah, it thank was. You. It really was. Uh, yep, she didn't swear either. Yeah. Huh? I did. <laughs> Slow down, and you're going to nail it. There was a really big change in my mom tonight. Before all of this started, you could tell my mom didn't really want to be here. She would curse, <laughs> and she would not care if things went wrong, or she would just get frustrated. My mom really stepped up and really acted like the owner. I need you all to make a promise to me. We cannot go back. There'll be no shortcuts. No. No freezing. No microwaves. And no microwaves. Thank you. You're absolutely right. Yes? Yeah, yes. there's no going back. Hands up. Swear? Swear. Thank you. Please maintain these standards. I will. I promise. Make it happen, guys, yeah? Good job. Make sure you look after Mum. All right, I will. Thank you so much for Seriously, coming. Seriously, well done. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so yeah? much. I'm rooting for you. I hope so. Okay. I'm, it's going to be great. You can do it. <laughs> okay. okay. Good night, guys. Well done. Thank you. Good night. Well done. Chef Ramsay did everything. There are just simply no words that can describe my thanks to him. I'm going to have good food, the word's going to get out, and I can come into my restaurant and be proud. When I first got here, Monji Monji may have been the only restaurant in America that didn't use an oven. That's how bad it got. And on top of that, there was so much animosity between the staff members, Julie was completely lost. This has to be one of the biggest transformations ever on Kitchen Nightmares. But the good news is, the town of Woodland Park may only have one Italian restaurant, but right now, they've got a great one. Wow, a drive through Italian. Jesus, that's a first for me. He smells really good. He really does. One more thing I have to do. Somebody's at the window. One microwave to go, please. OK. Thank you. OK. You manage? We'll see. That's it? Yeah, it doesn't fit that way. Thank you. Here. Close your, there we close go. your window. There. Hold on. Close your window. Close Good girl. <laughs> Janelle? 
Janelle, Janelle. Coming. I'm holding the bottom, darling. Okay. That's it. And I've got the weight. I've got the load. Okay. okay. Just shove it in there. Okay. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. <laughs> Excellent. Bye bye. Bye. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Oh, that was funny. After Chef Ramsay left, the positive mood and the positive feedback continued at Manja Manja. Julie ended up extending Chef Don's stay. Fire and table 10, I need a lasagna and a short rib. Lasagna's got five minutes. And with his leadership, the kitchen is much better organized, and Julie is even now spending time behind the line. We have a beta Caesar and a calamari. Calamari's coming up. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Julie is a changed woman, and she finally has what she always wanted, a quaint, premier Italian restaurant in the picturesque town of Woodland Park, Colorado. Really good. Thanks for coming Thank in. You. Thank you. Thanks really for coming. Good. All the criticism that I got from Chef Ramsay was, in the long run, very good. I have a better restaurant. Business is great. It's going to be a wonderful year. I know it. <laughs>